um, what would you what what would put the, um, and how would you put the radical into the radical housing network? What is what is radical? Was a radical idea that that would define the network as radical as opposed to just the same old that clear presence or not? Yes. Don't want to rephrase that. <laughs> Um, yeah, how would you put radical into the radical housing network? Uh, let me see. <laughs> um, I think it's, it's about taking all the, the good ideas that are out there and combining them together as much as possible. So at the moment, the, the only real option for most London councils for building new housing, especially new social housing, is to go and approach a big housing developer uh, who will work in partnership with the housing association and they'll go out and build their block of flats and they'll manage it and they'll run it and they'll make a tidy profit off of it. Um, so we need to present an alternative to that. Mm -hmm. um, and we can do that, you know, if we take um, the idea of communities having more control over their neighbourhood, uh, getting together, actually, you know, putting the bricks and mortar down themselves, setting up a, a co-op to manage the housing, you know, combine all these ideas together and you you will have a viable alternative that can stand up to like, you know, what at the moment there's only one option. For me, the answer is really not an answer, you know, we just need to do it, you know, not for it being also a basic principle, you know, we don't need to talk so much about it, we don't need do so much thinking and planning, but we need to actually do it. And if that means, uh, you yeah, know, breaking so-called glass ceiling, and I mean, we've, we've been doing that. We've been, for want of a better word, bullying our way into things that sort of community groups wouldn't gain access to. Yeah, but we just need to do it. Yeah, and more. Uh, and I'll keep saying it: more people who get involved and form their own groups or join other groups that already exist, yeah, and keep banging at those doors, yeah, and, you know, with what Ian has said, yeah, we'll, we'll get there, Some, something must give, yeah, something must give. Uh, John? Well, a really central question in my mind comes back to who is it who's making the big decisions about housing, about what it costs, where it is, what form it takes? And the fact of the matter is demonstrated time and again that the companies that currently finance housing, design it, build it, I mean, their priorities are very different from the people on the whole who live in it. Um, and, you know, the, the really crucial question is to put residents in a position where, to a greater or lesser extent, they have a degree of control over what those decisions are. And you know, that to me is, is you know, would have a, it would have a very fundamental effect on the overall shape of the housing market, I think, um, if the, the control which the companies that pr presently run <coughs> it and with political support and so on, um, had to take account of what, you know, you and I and the next man had to, had to say about it. Yeah, for me, I mean, radical has got a specific meaning in a political sense. Um, and within this context, uh, what that means for me is um, a non-market-based approach to making decisions. Um, that, you know, we could go into s in, in more specifics, but, uh, you know, in essence, I think, yeah, because, our, because our political paradigm is based around the market, won't be the sort of change that we want to see without a change to that system. And, and the housing, you know, the housing crisis, so called, is not really a housing crisis, it's a symptom of something else. Yeah, okay. um, Alex, um, can I just, just open it up 